Hi guys, welcome back to Melbourne Adventures. Today I'm going to talk about three major upgrades that you should do with uh, if you buy one of the three RC cars from Arma, which is uh, the Outcast, which is this one, uh, Creighton, or, or the Notorious. So all three cars have essentially the same chassis uh, and internal uh, mechanics. The only downside is that since all three of them are uh, kind of stunt trucks, uh, Outcast and Notorious being the most uh, tilted towards um, stunt truck architecture and uh, and create an somewhere between uh, somewhere between outcast and Italian so these these trucks are designed to do jumping and once you buy them you can't really help yourself uh, uh, help yourself stop uh, doing that because because you're just going to do it uh, since these are designed for it and then uh, you'll be tempted to actually do that so the main problem with these trucks is that the underlying uh, chassis is metallic and once you start jumping these trucks this is going to bend uh, sooner or later and once this bends the columns here which are if you can see, I'll just tilt the camera. The the front column, which is metallic, as well as the bottom one, these will start caving in as the chassis bends. So in order to actually stop this process, because once this starts happening, then it will affect affect the drive shaft, which is under here. It will bend the gears, which which are here, and ultimately affect the motor. So the whole sort of machine will be affected so in order to avoid these things uh, there are two essential upgrades that you should do and i actually was helped by one of my friends here Khoram. so he he sort of makes these parts custom parts for arma built out of carbon fiber and uh, stainless steel uh, so these are really really sort of sturdy and strong and uh, sort of strengthens the the overall architecture of uh, the vehicle so number one is the main if you can see the main plate which sort of goes from this tower to the front tower so this is a uh, this is a uh, this is built out of uh, fiber fiberglass and uh, and is quite strong uh, and cannot be bent so this sort of supports the end-to-end -end chassis and as well as at the back if you can see there is it's usually the standard um, standard column which actually comes uh, with the vehicle is uh, plastic which is flexible which is good but uh, because the chassis underneath is is metallic so there needs to be a metal part supporting this so this I have replaced, I have replaced, I have added this plate in the middle and then there is a third issue, inherent issue with the, with the front, uh, uh, front gears, uh, with the front uh, steering servo. It has a bit of flex in it, so in order to reduce this flex, there is another carbon fiber piece which I have added. If you guys, I can show you guys the piece. So this is the piece which is sort of, uh, which replaces the original plastic piece. And uh, this one gives uh, the servo, basically it is there to extend the life of the servo since you reduce the, uh, reduce the flex in it. So there is a, there is a, greater chance of not actually uh, doing something wrong with it and kind of increases the life of the servo. So these are three essential upgrades that I think I would advise all of you guys to do as soon as you buy one of these trucks. It will just cost you about $50 or $60 but it will extend the life of your vehicle uh, to more I would say. So that's one. The other purpose of the video was to actually show you guys that last weekend I actually, after the crash of uh, the Outcast, I actually broke the wing 
back wing as well as the wheelie bar. So I tried to repair this. The wheelie bar was actually not completely broken, but it was cracked since it was a very, very hard uh, high jump that uh, I did and I couldn't control the vehicle and literally landed on the wing. So I, uh, so last weekend, so I, I repaired it, but last weekend I went out and uh, we had a bit of bashing session again and I ended up breaking this uh, wheelie bar as well as the wing. So I'll, I've ordered in the replacement and hopefully I should receive it in a couple of weeks when I will change it. But in today's video, I just wanted to show you that in case, because this is something which is going to break more often than not since these are strung trucks and there is a high propensity of actually breaking these uh, a couple of parts which which are sort of external peripheral parts there to actually safeguard the main important parts of the vehicle such as the in the front there is uh, there is this bumper I've broken this as well and I've gotten it replaced these are not these are cheap parts so you can you can easily replace them and same goes for the wheelie bar as well as the wing so i'm just in this video i'm just going to show you how to actually take this off uh, because it's, it's kind of a, a process which if you have gone through it it's much easier to to actually uh, do it yourself instead of taking it to a maintenance shop and uh, spending additional money on it and plus since it's a hobby vehicle you should try and do it yourself anyways so basically the uh, the wing and the wheelie bar is kind of one a single component which is connected um, all together as one and then it is connected with three set of screws so there are six screws which actually connect the wing and the wheelie bar with the, with the main chassis uh, so if I just show you the nuts, this is the first sort of screw which um, keeps it, uh, connects it with the metal, uh, the metal piece which then connects to the chassis which I have replaced. Then there is a second one over here and then there are two more behind the wing. So we'll, we'll try and sort of undo them one by one. And uh, so these uh, these are quite long sort of screws and goes end to end, but the but, but the actual lining of the screw is just is, is quite small. So the rest of the screw is quite flat. So you can literally pull it out once you have unscrewed the initial bit. And this is the kind of nut which is on the other side of the screw. So once you have sort of un unscrew uh, this one you can you can put it on the side and then for the rest of it you can use one of the allen keys which uh, which actually comes with the maintenance kit of uh, outcast and uh, using this you can actually start unscrewing this and let's see if I can get the right one so there are four of them which comes with the kit and uh, and these are sort of applicable for different areas so as you can see that these I have for the for the purpose of the menu I had already unscrewed it a little bit so that we get lesser time uh, so you basically unscrew it and after you have done that you can actually use the pliers to actually to simply pull the pull the nut out it would be easier if you can take one of the wheels off, this wheels off, because then it will give you space to actually pull the pliers out, uh, pull the, use the pliers more comfortably. But even with this one, you can actually try and get it out. You have to be a little careful while pulling these nuts because although these are quite thick, but you can still break them and cut them if you are not careful enough. So as I was explaining, you can actually see that the rest of the map is quite flat and the uh, sort of grooves are right at the end. So you don't have to really use the Allen keys to unscrew all of it, but uh, you have to do it just in the initial, initial bit and then you can uh, pull the rest of the screw out. So that's one. And then 
once you take this off there are two sort of uh, plastic pieces which are which come in between the uh, chassis, chassis piece and the, and the wing piece itself just to give it a bit of a cushion I guess so you need to take care of these and put them on a side as well and now comes the third one so another trick that I sort of have used learned in the past few weeks is you can actually push this out from this side if it is already unscrewed which I think this one probably isn't so I'll just try and unscrew it now yeah. once this is unscrewed you can see that uh, this plastic piece comes off because I've already removed the other nut from the other side and you can actually put this Allen key here and hit it on the head with, with the pliers gently. It's a bit of a frustrating process to be honest, but enjoyable at the same time. Okay for now, but I can 
see a few areas where screws have been damaged and literally the metal bends are there so much stress and pressure. So, but that's the idea of the whole thing, I guess. it's gonna affect the vehicle too much but uh, it's always better to actually do the bashing with all the equipment which is there as a safety equipment to use okay so this one was easy so as you can see both these screw holes this one and this one have been slightly damaged I don't know whether you guys can see it clearly in the video or not but uh, so yeah so just summing up guys uh, three major upgrades there has to be an end-to-end -end, uh, there has to be an end-to-end -end, uh, metal piece which actually complements the metal chassis underneath and uh, helps it not bend and this has to be from one column to the other column so that uh, so that it, the forces which actually bend the chassis do not are not able to, so the force impact is actually distributed amongst the whole body. And secondly, this metal piece is also important because this connects the uh, wing as well as the rear pillar uh, with the chassis. So, so the whole thing actually is is kind of a single works in a, as a single unit rather than uh, different module or modular parts, uh, which. Uh, sort of helps you uh, with uh, preserving the more important bits such as the drive shaft which is right underneath and the motor and the gears of course. Thanks for tuning in and uh, stay tuned for newer videos.